The Crimson Dragoons are a 25th founding chapter, similar to the Star Scorpions and the Fire Angels. The reason for their creation was to defend the entire Mordant Zone from threats of interplanetary magnitude. The first Crimson Dragoons were recruits of the Black Templars, and that is possibly the reason why the Crimson Dragoons hold such high reverence and worship of the God Emperor. The Crimson Dragoons usually scout the battlefield before combat in order to examine the lay of the land. By doing so, they can choose the best positions to set up firing squads, preferably on higher ground. When the preparations are complete, the Crimson Dragoons will position their gunners in a way to maximise their chances of victory. While tactical and devastator marines throw down volleys of bolt fire, the bikers and land speeders will burst out of form formation and pursue the enemy into a fast paced melee. Once the charging units reach the enemy in close combat, the fighting that ensues is usually brief yet bloody, with the attacking units appearing like a blur to enemy forces before swift death befalls them. After that, the tactical marines, followed by devastator marines, centurions and thunderfire cannons, will make a slow but purposeful advance, unleashing a deadly payload while on the move, blasting away all opposition. These tactics made the use of assault marines and other close combat units obsolete, with the exception of bikers, who are usually accompanied by attack bikes and land speeders. However, the chapter also has a fair amount of dreadnoughts, although they have no ironclad patterns. And terminators are also usually kept in orbit, awaiting deep strike where they are needed most. The combination of ranged firepower and well placed close combat units creates an orchestra of destruction which brings forth doom to all foes. In addition, the chapter utilises very few vehicles, so that even rhinos and razorbacks are rarely seen in the ranks of the Crimson Dragoons. For this reason, the chapter compensates armour for firepower and adds additional squads of heavy weaponry and crews of thunderfire cannons. All neophytes that are chosen by the Crimson Dragoons are placed under custody of the Master of Recruits. He will then lead the recruits through the deadliest of forests that appear on Augustinian soil. In this journey, the neophytes will fight monsters of all kinds that stalk the shadows of the planet, defend the settlers who inhabit these areas and train to become true space marines along the way. This is referred to as the Bloody Pilgrimage by the Crimson Dragoons. While on pilgrimage, the neophytes must learn quickly about the ways of the chapter, whilst they will die along the way. By surviving in the lethal wilderness, the recruits are exposed to many dangers, and each encounter helps them a step closer to joining the chapter. The Dragoons insist on not counting the neophytes as part of the chapter until they finish their pilgrimage, and become fully fledged space marines. When this happens, they are chosen by one of the ten companies and officially welcomed into the chapter, thus earning the title of Crimson Dragoon. This deviation from the Codex Astartes has been accepted due to the fact that neophytes are not allowed to leave the sites of the Master of Recruits, which means they never leave the planet until they become Space Marines. It is to this reason that the Crimson Dragoons do not have any Scout Marines, Scout Bikers or Land Speeder Storms. Unlike most Space Marine chapters that only have a single fortress monastery, the Crimson Dragoons have nine. Each of these are called Sanctuaries, and each serves as a headquarters and base of operations for a single company. The first of the Sanctuaries serves as a fortress monastery for the first company, the second Sanctuary for the second, and so forth. The tenth company does not have a Sanctuary, and is instead scattered across territories that surround the planet Augustine. Each of the nine Sanctuaries is comparable to a mighty fortress, with not only rock creek walls and mighty gun batteries defending it, but also icons of great heroes and entire chambers devoted to worship and praise decorating its interior. Due to the fact that the Tenth Company is rarely gathered in one place at a time, they are known to field an ambiguous number of marines, perhaps a bit more than what a regular company is permitted. Meaning if the entire Tenth Company were to be rallied together, it would number more than 100 marines. These claims however have not been proven by any inquisitor as of yet, Thus, the chapter has a degree of free reign, allowing them to muster a slightly larger number of Astartes to battle. This deviation from the Codex Astartes has gone largely ignored due to the chapter's close ties with the Ecclesiarchy.